you know, how women, I'll say used to, I don't even know if that's the case, how women used to guard like their vagina is the way that men guard their hearts. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of people these days try to rape us, like emotionally, like express yourself. Tell me how you feel. It's like, I'm not ready. <laughs> Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. So, when it comes to size, mm -hmm. I understand because I've always told myself, I become fit for myself. Um, when it comes to eating, you know, I am on this big health journey just because growing up, Diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, low sugar, arthritis, all these health issues ran in the family because of how we ate, um, the things that we drink. Um, and when I go in the gym, I don't see many of us. I see men. I'd always see black men in the gym. Mm -hmm. But I don't see many of us because many of us are now resulting to surgery and BBLs versus actually working out. And it's no shame because some people do it for certain reasons, like mummy makeovers, where some people don't have a choice. But the ones who do have a choice, it's not. I've learned that men appreciate authentic and real. So even though you may look good, to them, they know that it's not real. When it comes to being like obese, unless you obese too, I don't know how much you could kind of like get on a female about being obese because if you want her to watch your, her weight, you need to do the same thing. You can't be downing her, but that doesn't give her a right to talk to you any kind of way either um and i think that's a lot of what is it self self-reflection mm -hmm. they're ugly to you because that's how they actually feel in the inside but if they actually cared about their mental more their fitness their career their goals then they will have more respect for you as a man or as an individual now it all depends. Some people are just arrogant. Right. So even if they're high value, they feel like everybody's lower than them. But typically those are the people who are furious with those and can't wait till they get high up just so they can make people feel little. Um, but I don't feel like it's fair for a woman to penalize a man and be disrespectful to a man because of how you feel internally. Now you have some men that do love BBWs and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your preference. But in your aspect, I completely understand because if you think about a wife too, you think about your kids. And if your wife is like this, then what habits are you going to pass? And that's why most of the men who like or prefer BBWs are not high value guys. Yeah. Because, again, there's there's a foresight that's necessary to be a high functioning man. Right. And it's, it's more about, oh, I like you being soft and shit like that. But what example are you setting for my children? Right. And and I mean, it doesn't even increase your likelihood of, of, of complications during childbirth. You know what I'm saying? So like this. This thing we keep hearing, yeah, some niggas like BBLs, rich niggas like BBLs, this and that. They'll fuck you. But as far as longevity, as far as growing, real niggas understand you get somebody who's petite with some curves, she has a kid, now she thick. But you get a thick motherfucker, she has a kid, 
You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's Unless a sense just- of an investment. There's a sense of longevity. What is this going to look like? What is this going to be? What is this going to mean 10, 20, 30 years from now? Yeah. You know, and you want a man who's able to think like that. Right. Not the motherfuckers who are paying 800 pound women to sit on them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and that's, <laughs> that's, the, and, and I, I never thought about it until, you know, the late Kevin Samuels would bring it up. Like, he'll ask a woman, how tall are you? I'm 5'3". How much do you weigh? 250 pounds. And then... Kevin Samuels would be like, yo, this NFL running back who's your height, who's a full grown man in the National Football League being tackled by 300, 400 pound motherfuckers is half your size. In what species are the females larger than the males? Because muscle weighs more than fat, right? I mean, Honestly, if you look at other countries, period, they don't have a lot of obese people in there. But it also has to do with what we eat. But I, I understand that. And, and that's why, again, I'm comparing the men to the women. Right. In the same circumstance. So sure. if, if, if we're in America, we're all eating shit. Yeah. But, and we understand muscle weighs more than fat. Right. Men have more bone density. There's no reason a man who is your height should weigh less than you. That is no very reason true. at all. <laughs> that is very true. No, because so, at the end of the day, if he's your height, his bone density should make him heavier. Yeah. His muscle mass should make him heavier. Right. So if you're bigger than him, like that makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just like I mean, it, the opposite is true for men. Men don't want to be smaller than their women. Right. You know, you don't want a nigga whose voice ain't as deep as yours, ain't deeper, ain't deeper than yours. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like those things that I've been just like a woman wouldn't want a man whose voice is higher than hers. Yeah. So like, why is it that a lot of these things and, and I don't think black men get enough credit for. We're the most liberal men as far as what we'll tolerate. Black men marry single mothers, black men, black men marry and 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 partner with women who are obese and the whole nine and it's like yeah that's all we feel like y'all deserve and i think that's what the manosphere and and all these you know spaces are are finally starting to say like no we deserve better yeah we deserve better attitudes we deserve better aesthetics how you look we deserve better energy especially if we're coming to the table saying all right you wanted me to provide and protect Boom, I'm a top 1% dude, boom, boom. All I want you to do is look good and be nice. And women are saying, oh, I can't even do that. Or oh, you don't even deserve me to do that. That shit hurt. I mean, that's pretty screwed up, in my opinion. Just, it's screwed up because I try to, I do try to strive to be nice and to stay fit. Um, and to know that there's so many men out there that feel that way, and uh, it's only a small percentage of women like myself who try to have a voice and like, hey, you know, we be working out over here. We we can cook over here. We're gonna appreciate you over here. But then it's so many that haven't appreciated our black men that they don't sometimes even take the time out to look at us over here. So that part of what that percentage of men feels, any other woman that is similar to myself, we're over here in the corner like, but Hmm. we're still here. You know, the whole prize argument, like who's the prize, who's the prize? You know, y'all are supposed to be the prize. Y'all is, a woman is supposed to be the validation of all the work. A, a good man puts in like, yo, I became a doctor. You know what I'm saying? I worked hard. I worked out the whole nine and here's what I got. She's supposed to be the prize. She's supposed to be the motherfucker you walk into the governor's ball with. And they're like, I need to shake that young man's hand. We're supposed to be able to walk to the, uh, walk into the, the cookout. And my uncles are like, I see you young man. I see you. A woman is supposed to be the prize. Yeah. You know, I got to the NFL. I, I became a doctor. I now make six figures more than even white men. 
And that's not just how she looks. It's also how she carries herself. Right. It's also how she speaks. Like, a woman is supposed to be able to, like I said, in that same governor's ball, like, uh, um, the fucking, uh, one of the congressmen and his wife, they're, they're having a conversation with, with your wife. Hey, honey, you got to meet the congressman. But she has to look good to attract people, right? Sure. Not just you, but she also has to have the mouthpiece. Sure. Also has, has to have the disposition and the whole nine. A woman is supposed to be the prize. A woman is supposed to be the person who helps you multiply the shit that you've already established. Cultivate your children in a way that, that they're going to be able to be great, even in your absence. A woman is supposed to be the prize. I but now, that. these days of, yeah, you're going to love me as I am, any size, and anything else is body shaming and misogyny and this and that. It's telling men that, oh, you don't deserve a prize. You deserve however the fuck I show up. That's not right. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not right. It's not right. I'm just glad men have finally starting to speak up. No, they should because it's not right. Um, I don't. It's not cool. No, because I'm really thinking about it, and it's like I operate how I operate, but I'm not like other women. So when I hear this, it is. I'm not gonna say it's discouraging. But it does make you feel like, dang, what do we do? Like, I'm talking about women like myself, like, y'all, what do we do? The opposite. <laughs> we do do the opposite, though. But it's so, I men hurt is different on men than it is women. So men would be hurt by three black women. But that fourth one, he should have tried, but he didn't try. Because now he just threw with it. Because... He's given his all and has received scraps. But if he had to just went to the fourth one, boom, there you go. But bitch. you see, that's why I say all the time, men love more authentically than women. A woman could fall in love 15 times in her lifetime. And every time, oh, you the love, I've never loved nobody like I love you. Oh, man, we got a couple of times and after that, we done. Men, and we don't get enough credit for it, but men love authentically uh, uh the, the best analogy i can give is like you know how women i'll say used to i don't even know if that's the case how women used to guard like their vagina is the way that men guard their hearts you know what i'm saying now a lot of people these days try to rape us like yes. emotionally like Express yourself. Tell me how you feel. It's like, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. Like, we understand that in the context of a woman, like you're trying to have sex with her. And she's like, I'm not ready. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not that comfortable yet. But with men, it's like, oh, you, you, you owe me this. And it goes back to the ownership piece. It goes back to you're a disposable handbag to me. And it's just about fulfilling my physical desires and, and my emotional desires. Right. So, like I said, I'm happy men are starting to speak up because hopefully the women who care know how to position themselves. Yeah. But again, yeah. it starts with, are you done being a fixer up? Because that's usually the case. Men do it too. Like some men are great men, but for whatever reason, they have a thing for fucking project hoes. Yeah. You know, and until he gets through that, he can't join with a good woman, because it's like, I don't really want her because she's not a problem. Like I talk about how, and I don't know what the female equivalent is, but some niggas, the reason they seek out like project hoes and shit like that, like the crazy girls, is because in a weird way, that type of woman validates his masculinity because we're being told nowadays that, oh, if you, if you dick her down properly, she's going to be key in your car and all that shit. So some men psychologically, subconsciously seek out those rah, rah, crazy girls because it makes him feel good about himself in a weird, perverse way. Yeah. And I'm sure there's the same for, for women on the, in the inverse. And then we keep pushing these myths like, yeah, hood bitches got the best pussy and hood niggas got the best dick. It's like, it's not true. I don't, yeah. But that's the narrative. It feeds. That sucks. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. And it's even more crazy because 
majority thinks like this. Yeah. Not all, but majority. Yeah. I mean, we know where it comes from, what people watch, what they listen to. Drama. If what they yeah, if it's they don't have anything else to do but feed into all of that. And once you feed something into you so much, then you become that. You start to act like that. I mean, if I eat chicken one time and then I figure out I love chicken, I'm going to keep wanting more and more chicken. And then after a while, when I'm like, oh, I'm sick, like maybe I shouldn't have ate that. Now it's hard for me to get off of it because I love it so much. It's feeding me even if it's not the best for it me. It hurts so good. It hurts so good. <laughs> Yeah. Real bad. Real yeah, bad. Real, real bad. Real bad. Real bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's sad. Have you ever heard of that that term? I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Dopamine. Mm. And I I feel like that's. I was reading. I was watching this YouTube, and it was talking about how sometimes we love what's not good for us because temporarily it makes us feel good and give us that satisfaction yeah our brain releases dopamine yeah and so then we keep going back to that same thing over and over again even if we know it's not good for us we keep going back for it because for some odd reason it's a part of the dopamine that's released in us make us feel like i need to be here but in reality you don't need to be here and i do believe that is a lot of the reason why I'm not going to use toxic. I'm going to say we keep ourselves in unhealthy sure, situations sure, sure. because of that reason. And we are, and when we don't realize, like, look, this is not the way you're supposed to be going. This is not the most healthiest route. It's not giving you the results that you want. We've all been here. You just have to learn from it. So... I think I think the saddest part about it, and I was thinking about this while I was in New York this past week. The whole time, because for whatever reason, we chose to drive. So it was me and my own boy. We were driving through New York. Never do that. Never drive in New York. It's a terrible idea. Um, but, you know, this particular time he was driving. So I was in the passenger seat just kind of looking. And everybody looked so frustrated. Like the motherfucker, you can kind of tell the motherfuckers who actually live there, yeah. right? But I couldn't help but think to myself, like, yo, if you move to South Carolina, if you move to North Carolina, whatever the case may be, you'd probably go crazy. Because, like, this is your life, and you're used to waking up on 10 and ready to pop off and, like, yo, with the shits and the whole nine, that that's your normal. And, like, you wouldn't even know how to operate in Greenville. You wouldn't even know how to operate in Charlotte. You probably run back to New York because like it's too slow. And unfortunately, that's what happens even with our women and even with our men. Like, I don't even think I deserve any better. I, I grew up sleeping on the ground, so now beds are uncomfortable. Or that thrill. The thrill of someone threatening to slash my tires, it just turns me on. Mm. But you have someone here that don't want to slash your tires. She just want to love on you, rub your back, cook for you. And you like, nah, that, that's not exciting enough. Yeah, yeah. Or you have that man that want to come home and rub your feet and right. rub your back and want to hear your day. And you're like, mm, that's boring. I want to go out and do something wild. I want to get super drunk and have a city girl day with the friends while my scammer man throwing ones and dollars at me. I want that. I don't want to hear. I don't want to talk about that. Who, who, my day was fine. Now what? We going out to eat? You going to take me shopping? I need my nails, my hair, and my feet done. You got me? Oh, you going to pay my rent too? Well, you know what? You know what it is? And I feel like we haven't really... As a community, we haven't really called it what it really is. I've been saying we have a mental health epidemic in our community. And a lot of what that is is depression. Yeah. A lot of what that is is anxiety, ADHD. And 
it's easy to distract yourself from dealing with yourself when you're always on the move, or you always got some liquor in you, or you always on somebody's yacht, or you always on somebody's beach. Like, can can you think of what it's like for the IG models, for the for the only fan girls when ain't shit going on, they just in the house by themselves, just sitting alone and thinking? That must be miserable. So yeah, I have to keep myself preoccupied. I have to keep myself busy because I'm running away from myself. Yeah. Voids. Just and this good man means I might have to confront myself and I don't like myself. I don't want to see myself. Accountability. A lot of people don't like accountability. They don't want to be wrong. Instead, oh, you, I'm wrong. Okay, well, I just won't deal with you no more. I'll go deal with somebody else. So you would rather miss out on this good man or good woman and go deal with somebody who don't care about you just because you don't want to admit you're wrong? I think what, what's counterintuitive, but I think they know they're wrong. Yeah. I think deep, deep down, <laughs> they know they're wrong, but, you know, kind of like the metaverse, kind of like social media, I can keep playing this character. Right. And this character is never wrong and is always right and it's beautiful and the whole night, even though deep down in my heart of hearts, I know it's all bullshit. I know I think I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. And that's what's scary because, again, we're making these fantasies realer than the real world. So people are just going to continue to escape. <laughs> Should I think about man? Should I? Think I about? mean, I think about this stuff too, but it's gonna take like-minded people to just keep being us, so that other people can see that there there is different. Everybody's not gonna see it, but I I I firmly believe that. If we keep being us, more people are going to see it. More people are going to listen. More people are going to understand. You have, we need to talk. You've allowed. I want to talk. What? <laughs> what did I say? Want to talk I'll the first time. You, I'll play with you. Oh, no, wait. Wait. <laughs> wait. I, I said it right. <laughs> but you've given people a different perspective of how to look at things that they they didn't look at it that way. You've had people on your channel who have voiced things, different women, different men, that have allowed for some men and some women to look at things in a different way, just by you being you and doing what you want to do. So other people like you, other people like myself, who wake up and this is you, this is what you do, we will make an impact. It won't be on everybody. But as long as you could touch one person, then it's going to take that one person that's going to be like, hey, bro, you need to check this out. And then it's a ripple effect. Same for me or anybody else who is on a positive wave. It just takes one person. And then they are going to start telling other people. So... I would say, I remember you say, how can we fix this? And just like we can't fix relationships, we can't be fixers, we can't fix it. All we can do is be ourselves, speak, share, and who's for us is gonna gravitate. Who's not for us, they're just gonna turn a blind eye and keep being in this avatar character that they have and they're just going to miss out you can't save everybody you can't save everybody in a friendship you can't save everybody in a relationship and as bad as we want to save our culture we can only save some people we can't save everybody because everybody don't want to be better and it's disheartening because we feel like like just just sit down for a second just listen to me just but some people just don't want to listen. Some people, it has gotten to a place where they don't believe in anything. They just out here cruising through life. 
And a lot of people are lost. And no matter how much you try to fix a lost soul, the only way a lost soul is going to be fixed is if some way they see the light and want to go in a different direction. Maybe something that you said one day down the line of click. But men and women cannot keep exhausting themselves and other black men and women if they don't want to hear it. Keep being a voice. Keep doing your thing. Keep talking. The real will rock with you. And even some people that are trying to grow and you're helping them, they're going to rock with you. But we can't fix our whole culture. It's impossible. It's impossible. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. Cause and you can't keep trying. Because, I, I, I mean, to your point, it, it's a cultural thing. It and is it's, a cultural it's thing. about, like, what we value as a culture. It's uh, even with my daughter, like, myself, her mom can only do but so much, you know. But right. If she's growing up in a in an environment who keeps celebrating certain things and keeps downing certain things, yeah. she's going to be pulled in that direction. So as a father, um, I'm really concerned about how to fix. And that's why, like, even, for instance, the Nation of Islam, that's why I have such a deep reverence and respect for what they've done. They've created, like, a community within a community to, like, say, this is how we do things. And if you see a nation of Islam, motherfucker, like, they skin smoother than anybody else. They walk taller than anybody else. Their diction is better than anybody else. So I think it's possible, but I think we're going to have to make sacrifices. Um, I have to be optimistic. Because <laughs> I want more kids, too. That's the other thing. I don't feel like it's impossible to get your point across and it clicked to some people. But just how you you literally say you cannot fix everybody when it comes to a relationship, it's the same thing as our culture. How you say some women, you can explain this, but they still don't get it. You can explain, you can lay the blueprint out there for a man. And they still don't get it. Some people, because of conditioning, just won't get it. They, they don't even believe that it could be more than what it is just because of condition. It's going to literally have to take them to want to get out of it. So that's why I say we be ourselves. Because we're going to keep attracting more and more people. And the more people attract, the more people start asking questions, more people start healing. But God can't even save everybody. He can, God can only save the people that want to be saved. You can give them the blueprint. You can guide them the right way. But it's ultimately, it's a, we are our worst enemy because it's just a choice. Like good and evil, it's not a person that exists that can make you evil. A situation can happen that can cause you a lot of pain, but being evil is all you. You choose to be a good person or a bad person. No one makes make you go and harm someone. You chose to do that. Unless you were like laced, drug, or chemically messed up and you didn't know or someone's controlling your mind. That's a choice. To be better is a choice. I could read books all day long about being a scientist, but if I really don't want to be a scientist, then no matter how much was poured into me, I'm not going to be a scientist. I want to be a rapper. I'm going to be a rapper. But your parent can feed you this all this time, no matter how long. If you don't want to do it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. No matter how much we pour into our culture, it's going to have to take the other side of people who are conditioned to step outside of that. It's hard for us to change traits and behaviors. It takes consistency. What they say, 30 days, it takes to break a habit. 60 days to learn a habit. 90 days 
for it to become a lifestyle. And some people can't even break, go two days without doing something that's a habit that's not good for them.